Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Interviewing the Legends. I'm your host, Ray Shasho. Todd Cochran is an American pianist, composer, keyboardist, electronic musician, and conceptual artist. Early in his career, he was also professionally known as Bayette. Cochran has started his career as a teenager with saxophonist John Handy. Two years later, he joined um, viprophonist Bobby Hutchinson, yes. Hutchinson, I'm sorry, quartet, and made his jazz recording debut composing and performing on a benchmark album for Hutchinson, Head On, on Blue Note Records. Cochran's first solo project, Rolls Around the Sun, became a number one jazz album. It's incredible. I listened to the whole album yesterday. From the mid-1970s forward, Todd has experimented with and incorporated synthesizers, electronic and mixed media concepts in his creative projects while collaborating with a wide range of artists in the genres of jazz, art, rock, pop, R&B, and 21st century classical. There is nothing this man cannot do. <laughs> Todd released two albums on Prestige Records in 1972 and 73. He was the keyboardist, principal composer, and lead singer of Automatic Man from 1976 through 78, which also featured drummer Michael Shreve, guitarist Pat Thrall. He was also a member of Fuse One, which was a, an incredible coalition of jazz musicians who released two albums on uh, CTI Records in 1980 and 81. The short list of his collaborations include, oh my gosh, it goes on and on, Peter Gabriel, Joan Armand Trading, uh, Maya Angelou and Stuart Copeland. Please welcome pianist, band leader, composer, producer, who was also keyboardist and lead vocalist for San Francisco progressive rock group Automatic Band and the jazz group Fuse One, Todd Cochran, to interviewing the legends. Hello, Todd. How are you? How's it going, man? Let me tell you, I love the album. Thank you. And of course, the album is called From the Vault Notes for the future. Um, very interesting concept. Um, you also describe each track in detail, which I think is very cool. I mean, for the interviewer or the it, it's a it's a great thing. Because, you know, we don't have to input too much. <laughs> number one. But, <laughs> but you know, it paints the picture. Um, some of the things I want to say about the album. First of all, this type of music opens your senses to new feelings and emotions deep from the human soul. And that's what I get from this kind of uh, concept. Oh, thank you. Well, that is definitely the, the intention. And um, I think that's where we connect in, when we're in our, uh, certainly in our most open state, that's where we connect and I think it's something that we all uh, think about at one time or another, or maybe all the time, is what is it really to uh, feel free? Exactly. Just to, just to be yourself and just to be present and interact with people in that state, that's really very special. And uh, just growing up and certainly being involved in music all of, all of my life mm -hmm. uh, i've seen that time after time and uh that's really what i've committed myself to is maybe you know to create things that will open people to that feeling free space exactly uh -huh. you know right away when you hear some of these tracks you think you know a movie soundtrack because you do hear bits and pieces of tracks like these in movie soundtracks, you know? Um, I mean, I, I think it's awesome. I love it. Yeah, I mean, you can describe the music many ways, I guess. Cinematic, uh -huh. epic, mm -hmm. ambient, new age, you know, I guess a little bit of all that, right? Well, I, I would think it is, um, I'll tell you the, the what I call the music that I, um, in making now and have been making for a while, but, mm -hmm. but uh, now that I really, I completely have my artist hat on at this at this point in time, so I've really, really transitioned into that mode um, fully again. 
and um, so I call the music that I make it's it's transidiomatic. I like that. <laughs> so it takes those things that I have been involved in that I've worked to to play and understand and know and create authentically, mm -hmm. and take those languages and uh, utilize them to to form an expression that relates to something um, that we are all familiar with, what we're concerned about, what we're feeling, what we'd like to know. And so I, I think really, uh, I guess I'd like at the highest point, I would like to tap into those areas and open up those areas that are, we might categorize as unsayable. Mm -hmm. You know, we carry a lot of feelings around, we have a lot of thoughts, but oh boy, I better not say that. Right. You know? And so how, how do we get clarity, you know, on where we're at if we if we if we can't speak it? Exactly. And, and so that's that we know we've seen music do. I mean, that's the yeah, I think that's the revolution of music, particularly of you know, what we understand and how it functions in pop culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and how it and how music functioned in uh, ancient culture as right. well, um, which was really taking note, you know, um, you know uh, putting something into that um, our 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 memory stream, you know, and and something that we can grow from because we've experienced it together. You're 100% right making that statement. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how certain instruments can sound like the culture of a, a country, a certain region around the world, a certain time period. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. That's yeah. right. Yeah, it does. And um, I, I think the thing about it is we have to just consider, if we can, um, that there was like this initial moment you know that we're all like a continuation mm -hmm. of and so us all being a part of that initial moment means that there is something you know deep within us there's a commonality embedded in us sure you know, that enables us to relate across uh different languages you know different gestures mm -hmm. you know different looks different skin colors yep you know, uh different food and and uh, that really excite that really excites me, you know. Uh, so we can move from the beginning to, you know, the deepest part of our um, imaginary future, you know, as long as we feel free enough to, uh, you know, to go. Sure. Yeah. You know, I can tell how you're so mature as an artist, as a music artist, because you've done everything, man. You let's let's admit you can do anything your jazz is incredible and i love jazz you could have made an album just pure jazz but you didn't do that you, you it's all expressions you know and it's 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 so, it's so different you know and it take it takes a mature artist to to pull it off like that you know well thank you yeah i think um i i think the, the maybe an operative word is is to like take what it is that we want to say mm -hmm. and uh, present it in a way that it's relatable. That is, and so, and, and that does not mean to play to a specific audience. Exactly. It doesn't mean that. Right. So, let, me, let me clarify, let's pause. <laughs> but that's trick, right? That's a yeah. very, you know, uh, it, it's a supposition. Mm -hmm. isn't it? And we tend to buy into that, and you know what happens as soon as we do that, Ray. Uh, you, you know, you, yourself as an author. Yep. And, you know, um, we lose our individualism. Yeah, you sell out. <laughs> it, it disappears. Yeah. You know, and so what they call it, um, like, well, you know, they, I guess it's like you know, you get, uh, you get caught, you can get caught in the blink. Mm-hmm. You know. When I listen to the music, it's like an artist with his canvas. That's what you're doing, basically, isn't it? Yes, and you're painting I, I a really, picture. And I really relate to um, 
creating uh, music in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And I think um, another thing that I think that I, that I would like to share, which kind of like might be um, uh, foundational um, to, you know, kind of like the, the perspective that I've developed, like, uh, and that I'm still developing, um, is that I've always uh, related to uh, the written word and literary. Right. Very, very important to me. And I, I've always been a reader since I was very young. I think one of the things I um, uh, did and that I could share that I did when I was very, very young, um, I used to read, you know, you know, this is, you know, it's nighttime, go to bed, mm -hmm. you know, prayers, good night, see you in the morning, out would come my, my book and my flashlight and reading under the cover. <laughs> so i did that and i found other ways to like read you know um this is like early multitasking you know uh <laughs> i guess you can't read while you're sleeping though right you can try <laughs> <laughs> you know when people put in like uh you know put in a book underneath their pillow right yeah so what are you doing i'm studying huh yeah <laughs> But I mean, you know, but that's a but that's a thought press. But what I wanted to say is that in terms of the music um, stimulating pictures, mm -hmm. um, it's just because I, I believe in reading and I get so much I've gotten so much from that since right. a very young age. There's there's syntax in the music that I've created on this record uh, uh, from the vault notes from notes from the future so mm -hmm. it begins with with words and then it moves from uh, words to the syllables um, of those words to pictures and those pictures are realized in sound mm -hmm. so that is the syntax so if if i'm really like on that thread um, which we all hope to be, mm -hmm. um, it would be natural for someone listening to it maybe to see that in retro and go from the sound to the picture. To the picture. And back to the words. Yeah. And your descriptions for each title are amazing, man. I don't How did you do that? I mean, did that come before? Be, well, it's got to come after the music, right? The description? Well, actually, no. I think I think about it before. Really, uh, beforehand, yeah. I've, and and I've always written um, words, and uh, actually, my writing and you know uh, expressing myself in language has been uh, very very important uh, to me, and so I think that, and then certainly with you know music being central in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, I've also been, as I'm sure you have too, been, you know, drawn into the world, world of art. Yep. And we get so much from that. And you sure. can just see um, how far ahead the fine art world is. Mm -hmm. The world of the visual artists and the sculptures uh, been uh, music. They're way in front of musicians because for the, the fine artist, the painter, the sculptor, to be able to mold mold life into into clay or whatever medium they're 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 working on, or an artist to put like emotional energy on a mm -hmm. canvas with a stroke, you know, with different strokes of their arm in the in a brush. As soon as you can do that and you're transmitting messages with that, it's like, you know, it's like um it's like a mandate mm -hmm. that you discuss your process. Right. Like you have to, okay, that's good. Let's sit down. We've got to we, we want to know, you know, we say that, yeah. like, well, we, we've got to cut it out. You know, what is it? Musicians, we, we, our culture is like, well, I did it and, you know, and, and we're so hip, you know, like you figure it out. Right. You right. Figure, you know I mean? It has many meanings. You figure it out. <laughs> you know, or, or, you know, you, or, or, or some kind of form of uh, manufactured aloofness. Right. You know, because you haven't really thought about it, but you know, uh, so I just think like that the whole culture of music is mm -hmm. behind the art world 
in that sense. I agree. Just because of the history of it and just how that's formed. So like, mm -hmm. so for instance, like you can, you have like a fine artist is uh, premiering a, you know, a new painting and, mm -hmm. an opening, and there will be lines around the block mm -hmm. gallery. Now with, you know, someone premiering some new uh, contemporary music, you know, man, you're like really like scraping, you know. Yeah, unfortunately. You know, because people, you know, the, the music world has not found a way to like uh, articulate what's happening in the music or prepare people for what they can, uh, the range of experiences mm -hmm. that they can possibly get from the music itself. And I think that that's so really, really very, very, very important, you know. It's amazing though, isn't it? That you can get a piece of art and people instantly, they're drawn to it and they draw all these conclusions, but with music, it, 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 it you know, it takes a long time sometimes to figure it out. You know, they have to listen to it over and over and over again. That, that, that's true. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, and then, but people haven't really, really talked about it. I mean, people, right. it's always been, um, there's been a lot more music criticism mm -hmm. as, you know, the artists, the actual musicians explaining, talking about their process. Right. And how that fits within the spectrum, not just the spectrum of music, because everybody, I don't think, can even relate to the world or life. Mm hmm that lens but they can relate to an experience right and yeah so that, that's what we're trying to you know uh put into the formation we're mm -hmm. like embedding it with experience and those those touchstones and you know um, that's what it is and so well, you that, you've yeah. reached all those touchstones in the music you know i mean Take, for instance, when, when I, I believe that this is it's the Native American flute, right? Is that what you call it? Well, surely, but yes. When I hear that, in, in you got that in a couple of tracks, right? Yes. Uh -huh. I mean, right away, you know, you're thinking, you, you know, um, American Indian culture, you know, it hits a nerve inside right away. I mean, it's, it's beautiful, you know, and it represents that culture, you know? Just from I one mean, instrument, and we, and we think about the indigenous, right, of of all cultures, and mm -hmm. just what that is in the purest, um, in the purest sense. It's like the voice uh, of of that culture, or you know, or expresses something that's unique. And so, you know what what it is when you go to the specific. The deeper you get into the specific the more universal it becomes, you know, like it, that, that might not be like the sound of my culture, but man, when, but, but when you touch on that, you know, from another culture, you, it's very, very relatable because you understand what that is actually resonating. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think that's just what makes, you know, music so, um, not only powerful but it makes it very very important um because we can communicate through those type of experiences you know if anything can bring us together and peace in the world it's music because because we can all identify with that any culture you know and, and and there's truth in uh very very deep truth is embedded in music it, it yes. has to be or, or it doesn't relate. People can't tell you whether it's out of tune yep. or too fast or, 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 or rhythmically it's not working, but they could tell you whether it is, you know, touching them in a certain way. Sure. Or not. And so that is something I'm very, very aware of. And, and the other thing, if we just like step back, just interesting what you just had said earlier, uh, Ray. Uh, mm -hmm when we look at, at just um, America, you know, because we're talking about just re regionality and just, you know, just that thing in a larger con context. Like, if we look at the history of of people, if we, and this, and then I'm gonna just like narrow it down to America, the, the American experience and the, the true 
history of America, and I'm not talking about the written history, you know, or the depictions in that, the true history of America is in the music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That's it. That's where it's pure. It's yeah. right. It's in, it's in there. We don't have to go to this text or this historian or this, you know, uh, social scientist. It's in, it's in the music, you know, so <clears throat> that's, um, you know, I, I think if you start seeing things, um, you know, from that window, uh, we kind of, we, we have a responsibility to um, give our all mm -hmm. to that, because it means really a lot for people to take their time to listen to what you've done. Yep. You know, you're very, very occupied with a lot of things, you know, uh, survival uh, has got a lot of dimensions to it right now. You know, my, my book, The Rockstar Chronicles, it, I'm going to send it to you, by the way. I'm going to send you both books. Um, Thank you. In the intro, I talk about we need to preserve our culture of music. And I mentioned jazz, rock, and, you know, the blues, you know, right. and especially, you know, jazz. Jazz, I don't understand what happened to jazz because you get all these proficient musicians the most incredible musicians on the planet Definitely. playing jazz music but it just didn't get that you know that commercial experience like it should have you know i mean it had that period with miles and coltrane and all those guys and you know but after that you know it was it's here and there and you know it should have gotten a lot more recognition especially today yeah well, well i think you know uh that music of of, of miles and train mm -hmm. uh, represented um an era right it represented a, an, an epic or yep. you know or let's mis mispronounce it an epoch okay um, there was absolute jazz was the popular music Mm -hmm. um before the before the 50s right certain things you know occurred within that and then there was the inception you know of rock um and which was based on the, the whole the you know the tropes of r and b mm -hmm. and gospel and that was delivered in another way and i think it was a a, a, a much it, it, it was a very, very uh, direct way of ex of expression. It was very, very deeply experiential. And when people caught on to that spirit, the, the whole thing shifted. And certainly there was the whole uh, 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 adaptation of that um, by English musicians, you know, who played that spirit back, different identity, you know, it sold wider, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it impacted the dominant culture um, <clears throat> significantly. And uh, we were, we were into that. And it, and I think what occurred in pop music at the time of the popularity of jazz's decline was um, there was, there was persona building that occurred in rock and roll. In right. Our, jazz was really not allowed that platform of persona. Yeah, exactly. Is, and that's what we're seeing like right now, like in, in hip hop culture. Mm -hmm. it, it's persona building, you see, and, and it's got all these other levels to it. It's very, very intriguing, you know, um, from that language and the sound and that sort of thing. And um, jazz is, is absolutely there. It certainly it's been, uh, you know, it's being taught in the, in mm -hmm. the uh, institutions. Um, people are more, you know, technically adept than they were before because they certainly know how to te teach it. They know how to train muscles. They know how to, uh, uh, to teach the, the things about the music that can be codified, the theory and, all these sorts of things, but I think in terms of the emotional content and that whole experiential thing that relates to people, <clears throat> that can't be thought. That has to be, it has to be lived 
and the truth matters. Right. Yeah. And so that's a whole other area. Yeah. You know, <laughs> politics and, you know, identity culture and all these other sorts of things. And yeah. so, but I think, man, as long as we keep our ear like to that music, man, there's a lot of, lot of beauty to be. Yeah. You know, admitted through uh, jazz. I found my voice playing, playing jazz. It, mm -hmm. it enabled me to relate to the world and everything that I have been able to do mm -hmm. on my you know, learning, studying, and playing uh, jazz because it's all there. To play jazz well, it sits at a certain place in the hierarchy of music because mm -hmm. you have to study so many different musics to play jazz well. Right. Yeah. And it's it, not easy. It's not easy. No. It's very intricate. <laughs> yeah, there's an intellectual yeah. thing like like to it but it, but it's really great and we you know and we have to be very proud of that i mean that's sure. one, of, one of our gifts to the planet is this whole other this wave of expression that continues and you know so it, so to me I, i'm thinking you know it should be in the forefront because it's so intelligent because you got so many great players you know but you don't you got uh -huh. let's let's face it there's a lot of commercial radio today there's a lot of crap mm. there's a lot of crap you know redundant stuff the kind of dance uh, teeny bopper type you know it's taylor swift and Katy perry yeah. people like that you know mm -hmm. you know and, and i grew up with all you know i grew up with my dad's music right you know so I, dad, what's your dad um, listen to uh, Ray. I'm, I'm curious. Sinatra, I love yeah. Sinatra. I've actually seen Sinatra five times in you concert. Why? Yeah, five times. Wow. Yeah, uh, he loved Mary Olanzo. He loved that you know that kind of voice. Yeah, yeah. You know, Buddy Rich. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, like that. King Cole. You know. Yeah, absolutely. And that was speaking in a very, very, very deep level man um, yeah and, and at, a, at a different time in our uh, american cultural yep evolution. See? and so when we got into um the cultural revolution you know things really really shifted mm. you know our sensibilities they did to another area which was definitely appropriate for the moment for the moment civil rights era and just the whole idea of <clears throat> you know uh, an intellectual awakening and just the whole thing of um there, there were really a lot a lot, lot of reasons you know like our race to space you know people were being uh, educated because we needed all of that brain power that we could right and yeah. <laughs> so that's a whole other conversation yes it? it is you know what i mean but 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 the warmth and the love and the connection, right? We always need that. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I I believe in moving us towards a an inclusive uh, society, and I think um, oh, there's one thing I could share with you, like about that whole you you were talking about the the what you see is the importance of jazz and how that is kind of dissipated. Mm -hmm. so I think about um, Duke Ellington, who uh, mm -hmm. inspired me very, very deeply and still does. Count Basie, another guy. In his book, uh, Music um, is My Mistress, he wrote a um, beautiful chapter, and it's a very short chapter. It's only two or three pages long. Right. Called The, the City of Jazz. And when he wrote The City of Jazz, he was talking about this was like a projection it was that was it was definitely futurism it was this imagined place that he related to which i think is central to the music that he made and he was talking about the streets where they were named after the jazz masters sure in this place of the city of jazz and he was talking about how they got together and uh they listened to each other and they talked about the whole uh concept of this you know uh 
rich democratic environment where there was mm-hmm. listening and, and hearing and working together. So that was something. So uh, a lot of people are not aware of that deep, deep vision that um, Duke Ellington had. The city of jazz, which is really like a, a it's like a utopian vision in a time where we were really mm-hmm. experiencing something we we could absolutely relate to uh, dystopia in terms of the, the the deeply conflictual reality we were existing mm-hmm. in at that time and not that we are you know i guess we're in a different variation of it right now but um still you know i, I think it's if, if we can just go back there and just absorb what was being expressed then and carry that energy forward that's that's really really powerful yeah. you know the, the kids today have so many tools at their exposure they could learn so much about all the great music you know it's a shame they don't I know. you know so so how would you see that occurring if they you know because i'm you know i'm seeing your guitar in the back there too too, right yeah oh yeah it was in in two and a half an hour ago right (laughs) i mean i I taught my my kids about my music growing up and they love it a little bit about that i'm interested in that that's good yeah i mean i was really into progressive rock you know the guys like yes i yeah. i like i like my vision orchestra of course um love billy cobham I, i'm friends with billy cobham by the way do you know billy oh. he's a good yeah. guy isn't he <laughs> yeah i knew him i man, i knew uh i'm gonna tell you i knew uh tommy boland oh you really you knew tommy boland and let me tell you, man, uh, Keith, Keith Moon and Tommy Bolin came to my house one night. You're kidding me. Oh, my God. What a party that one must have been. <laughs> uh, and Keith was driving his uh, Excalibur, you know, and so it was like, man, you you know, you know, they were loud. You know what I mean? That's loud. <laughs> driving an Excalibur in, uh, you know. The Hollywood Hills is, wow. is like, you know, and he and yeah, and, and Tommy uh, died shortly like after afterwards. And yep, I know his brother. Yeah, you you, you knew you knew his uh, brother. I I know his brother. I've had him on the show. Yeah, Tommy's yeah. brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, because he was really really interesting. You know, uh, he had everything going for him, but you know. There was the abuse of, you know, the excessiveness. Yeah. Unfortunately, it happened to a lot of jazz guys, too. Absolutely. You know? Yes. It yeah. All, it's a possible Yeah. Style. Man, that's what's going on in America right now. Are you kidding me? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we've got a, you know. The fentanyl, you know, man. Fentanyl and, and just weirdness, man, that I, that I like, man, I could not even, even imagine being a part of. I, I used to party. I'm yeah, scared. But yeah. I would not do it today because of the fear of all that stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so that's it. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I definitely could not be established myself as a, as an evangelist for not getting high. <laughs> <laughs> However. <laughs> that being said. That being said. <laughs> I want, to ma- I want to mention some other tracks on your album. Huh? I want to mention some other tracks on your album. Yeah, I believe I guess. <laughs> we were going, we, that's where we were going, right? That's where we were going, I guess. Um, <laughs> you, you beautifully matched the music with this title track, Him for the Hidden People. Oh, my God. Thank you. you you're talking about expressing yourself through music and whatever. You did it. You did it, man. Yep. Well, thank you. And you, you played some beautiful piano on that as well. Okay, thank you. Well, that is it. And the uh, the voice of the horn there is actually, it's being played by, um, that's a Tibetan temple horn. It's a very, very long horn. You know what I can do? I'll, 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 uh, I'll send you a picture of the horn. Okay. It reminded me of the Vikings, you know, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, but this yeah. is like the, what the, you know, the uh, uh, Buddhist. Um, right. Um, 
I, I don't know where they sit in it. I don't think that they're priests or that, but you could definitely can reference it online. And so that was it. And so it was a really just a, a, a two pitch sound that <clears throat> really, in speaking of it, it's a it's like a voice of humanity, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's kind of like um, you know, that scene that the uh, the gathering around the, the the monolith in uh 2001 right right so that we just see that you know the what uh, what was it that they tossed outward right and and it just represented you know um what is that it's, it, well we could just go many many layers of what that <laughs> represented but that's what I was feeling with the the hymn for the hidden people, the people who, uh, who who are who are invisible, right? And they're and, and they're invisible because we have not um, given ourselves to being attuned mm -hmm. to the fullness of the reality around us, and and I think once we tune into that so so if we're not tuned in into the fullness of it there's going to be an emptiness sure us because you know we are you know i am you know i i am because you are you know which is a deeper deeper concept you know uh, humans we we cannot really live and exist without socialization that's right. We're connected. If we like it or not, we're all connected. And and so yeah. what do we what do we know is like <clears throat> the greatest punishment that someone who's being, you know, a, a, a prisoner, someone who's being reprimanded, or someone who's being tortured. The greatest yeah. thing is solitary confinement. And so that really speaks there. We we, we have to connect. You know, and, and so this is about those we don't uh, see because we haven't been taught. Yep. You know, <clears throat> you know I think there's a empathy and yes, the COVID experience kind of made a lot of people realize, you know, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, realize what that we're kind of like that we're detached. I, I don't want to detached. Like I yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. They get the same feeling those people have gotten for years, you know, the regular people, and they're realizing, wow, it's this is a horrible feeling, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Yes. And, and 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 that's different from being otherized. Um it makes me think about um Mahatma Gandhi. Mm -hmm. And certainly the revolution that he um uh, led in in india uh particularly when he addressed the uh the dilemma of the people called the 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 untouchables right and so what he did to bring attention to that which was really just um so beautiful so powerful and so memorable is that when he would speak about those untouchables, you know, who were so um, locked in to this caste system, mm -hmm. he gave them a, a, a name, which I believe was called Harari. I might, I may be wrong. I'm not pronouncing it right. And I, I can't give you a spelling of it, um, which he started calling what heretofore had been called the untouchables, the Harari, which was a, uh, a representation of beauty and something that was angelic and represented the you know the life of their of their spirit and the importance of that and just that by giving that name and when they were speaking and referencing the untouchables that that you know, that caused a great momentum in the changing of, of perception and in that movement you know of, of, of liberating you know people from that condition you know? yeah, exactly and, so I think we like yeah. in, in doing our small part right. can 
do the same thing, you know, as as storytellers. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's another part of our human need. I agree. That we need to be connected, and we absolutely need stories. Sure. Yes. Yeah. You know, the Beatles, in a way, touched on that with that song, Nowhere Man. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah cuz I I Yeah. Just, you know, grasp from that. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, this the track We Make Two to Make We. I love yeah. that. You teased us with your traditional jazz, didn't you? I loved oh, yeah. it. I loved it when I heard that and then it went into like a kind of an electronic thing, you know. Yes. <laughs> that was very clever. The, the, the bass <laughs> and, and that's going but and and you know and you know what that is it's it's uh it's a play on words mm -hmm. and and really it was about um giving us a handle to handle by which we can handle what that is actually expressing because right here, I, I see you threading it together there yeah, because that is about that we are actually you know in this process of joining mm -hmm. Know, in a in a healthy way so we can deal with this whole man reality can you believe that like i saw a statistic uh yesterday or maybe earlier today is um just about like the number of shootings that have gone on oh my gosh and, every and, day every day something's happening it's unbelievable we're talking, we're talking about deaths and we're talking about uh what we're really saying, what we're really seeing there, Ray, man, is that um, there are no safe places. There isn't a safe place. Yeah. So you can't go just go run off. No. And live in the woods somewhere or, you know. There's, there's been two shootings at dollar stores. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. You know, uh, you can't go, you know, uh, places of worship. You know, you can't go to uh, synagogue or, or, or church or to the temple or um school can you believe that you know um you know and kids like when i uh grew up we used to we have weekly like air raid drills i remember that yeah yeah you see and we'd get under the desk and we would line up and we would do this and the siren would go mm -hmm. off at a uh, time and we would just go like right just can you imagine you know like the, the kids uh because sort of my son is is older um having a you know weekly drill of who got the you know the as right the active shooter drill they're terrifying the too Can they're you terrifying my my daughter's a teacher oh yeah okay her her husband's a t teacher right. we got a lot of teachers in the family and yeah. their friends have been through those drills and they are terrified <laughs> It's very yeah, scary. I mean, it is something, and so, and just think about it like that. Your, your, you know, your daughter and and, and son-in-law, mm -hmm. uh, you know, having to be trained, you know, as teachers of how they're supposed to respond to an active shooter. Exactly. Yeah, it's, that's yeah. So that's uh, that's a symptom of uh, of disconnect. Yep. I mean, how and, many? How many more shootings do we have to have before something happens? You know, we, it gets corrected. I don't know. Are they going to fix it, or are they going to just let it go? I just don't know. I, I, I don't. I don't know either. But you know, uh, just that, like having lived abroad and and spent a good amount of time abroad and traveling, and yeah, to say, well, you know, I've been in a taxi cab. You know, I've been in cabs, and the drivers say, man, well, what do you expect? It's going to happen. <laughs> You know what I mean? You know, mm. what, what, I mean, you know, everybody's got, you know, access to these, you know, very serious weapons. You know, I don't think we really need assault weapons, do you? <laughs> I, I really don't yeah, it, it, it's really quite something. So I don't know what that really. Yeah. So that's another level of. Um, that's another level of aggression. Right. I don't, I don't think it's you know, preserving or protecting your family or. You know, or sport, but anyway, yeah, it's yeah. another yeah. conversation, I guess. <laughs> well, but basically, we're talking about um, in the largest, larger context, um, just the ongoing 
realizations of uh, man's inhumanity to man. Right. You know, and we can speak about that in, at a dimension of of love because most of us really enjoy our uh, our encounters, man, and look forward to our encounters with other people, man. And, and we do. People who are different from us, people who have different experiences than us, you know, people who are who are uh, who are curious. The sharing of ideas, you know, the you know, and and then on the you know, and I think with that, look at look at where we are. I mean, and we, we are just really really advancing as a certain aspects of our society in just incredible ways. You know, it's really quite quite something. Technology, communication, <clears throat> and that, but it, but it just it just feels like we're losing some of our sensitivity as we go and common sense i mean look at the aggression people have just from road rage i mean it's not necessary right you know people get so mad at everything nowadays that's true isn't it yeah Mm -hmm. i don't get it yeah i've always believed that music can make a difference i've seen it make a difference it does Music has changed this country. Yes, it's, it's changed the world. It's it's uh, become it, it, it's a fixture of the of the zeitgeist. Um, um, it's it it leads. It's it has led and it continues to lead people to in you know uh, different states of enlightenment, mm-hmm. and of awareness, sensitivity, and the importance of all of us like to you know discover what it is that we do that is unique and that we can make a contribution to the world with that i think that is really what it is we're not supposed to leave here without making a contribution you're right you're 100 percent right and uh, and the way i think about it uh is that um i know that um if I weren't doing music, I would be doing something else. Um, but my but my mission would be the same. Right. It's, music is just the thing that that called me. It's mm-hmm. Absolutely, it like a calling. I did. I really didn't choose music. It just was just like there, and it just overwhelmed. You know the 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 alternate routes that I could have taken to. You know. Um, well, with this life experience in creating a life experience, mm-hmm. you know, which I think is very, very important. Yep. But, uh, yeah, it is absolutely for me. It's way more than just the notes and the textures and the sounds and the rhythms and the melodies and <clears throat> and, and and that. It's really it's a it's it's an invitation to um, see each other. Mm-hmm. I think when we when we actually if we could tell another person, you know, that I see you and I, you know, I feel you, I hear you, and that, and then we get to that point, and this is something that's not an, an, an original phrase at all. We can get to that point where we actually experience soul recognition. Mm-hmm. And, and we if we get to a place when you get to that place, your life has changed, you know, and you are really in service to these larger needs that are on the planet. We have a very needy planet. Yes, we do. Yeah, there are things that, that need attention. And um, I just think it, it's it's really great. And this with this uh, recording, what I, I really wanted to talk about, um, the experience of being fully in the present and imagining that we are hearing echoes, you know, from the future. Mm-hmm. As we know, like in our minds, we are all we're continually moving from the now. We think about something in the past, you know, with our memory, and then we're projecting somewhere, uh, you know, or something that's about to occur. You know, as we certainly, you know, as we're being aspirational. So to take that and really 
reflect what's going on and make this like a um a safe space you know we, we like um what i've spoken about before the music when the music interacts with a listener and an audience we're, we're actively involved in um maybe just for a very short while um we're creating like these little uh poetic islands of mm -hmm. peace and that's something that I have um, thought about quite a bit, and um, it's maybe it's uh, certainly a, one of the central themes of everything that I do is that I believe that music is an instrument of peace. It is. That's it is. Really, that's, how I, that's how I see it. So there is the peace with within it, and there's you know, and it and it embraces all that we are, and certainly inspires us to be come all that we are meant to be but you accomplish so many elements in this album um one one track very the very spiritual track hmm. is that i want to pronounce this inseparable is that oh yes inseparable yes it's uh you say balance in our lives and the spaces we occupy is a dance of opposites Om and Amen are the same thing. Yes, they are. Love yes. it. And you got the sitar, right? Are you playing sitar? Yeah, yeah the sitar and um, also uh, there's a tabla. The tabla, yeah. Tune finger chimes. Yep. So I'm, you know, utilizing that authentic palette. Fantastic, man. And and it is a um, it is a Indian uh, classical mm -hmm. uh, meter to it. It's in uh, oh, we're, we're getting technical. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I won't go down I won't go down that uh, that road because that's a whole different thing. I, I it's something like it's kind of like full circle because I when I worked with um, John Handy, who I started working with as a mate, right. Uh, teenager at the time uh, other than the quartet that I played in with him and John Handy of course is an alumni of uh, Charlie Mingus's band. Mm -hmm. Four albums with Charlie Mingus, you know, including the, the Ahong album and these are like the really special yeah. records that he did when he was on, uh, when he was on Columbia. And um, at the time, John was also working with Ali Akbar Khan who was a you know classical Indian musician, and so he was fusing the jazz with the Indian, and there were all these other you know wonderful things going on. You know Charles Lloyd, um, you know, with uh, and, uh, Keith Jarrett was playing yep. um, within the Forest Flower period, and really, really, really drawing on like all of these flavors, and then you know, and then the way I grew up and way the the radio was. And we heard like all of the music on the same station. Exactly. It, it, it's not all split out like it is like right now. You know, like uh, you know, like, you know, you, you dial in, and you're only going to get like a slice. You know, but not like how it's mm -hmm. naturally interrelated. And so, basically, in that idea of uh, inseparable, we're speaking about we as being. Uh, seekers of meaning and finding that peace mm -hmm. so we can interact in a constructive way uh, so that's the uh, that's the baseline assumption right <laughs> uh, and building uh, on uh, and as we are on that journey and we are releasing like these impediments and things that hold us back, you know, um, regret, hostilities, relationships mm -hmm. that didn't go the way that we hoped to, you mm -hmm. know, uh, minor trauma and all of this. And we get there because we are seeking like an understanding of um, is there a place where we can actually free ourselves of those things that hold us back and so that we can realize our fullest potential sure and, and give something of value like to our to our planet i think as we do it, it, it 
the visual on that, which I hadn't expanded on fully in what I'd written, is that we come, and so we, we're experiencing that journey like as a ritual, mm -hmm. and comes a moment where it's kind of like an opening, and we catch a glimpse of the holy structure, of the sacred structure, right, which basically reflects how intertwined we are. Mm -hmm. That's the structure. Yep. Yeah. We are the we are the architecture. That's basically that's basically it. That's a great track, man. You you know after the intro. It kind of turns, <laughs> here's my take on the music a little bit. It was a cross between the Who's Baba O'Reilly and Tubular Bells by Mike Oldfield. If you can oh, hear that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I kind of heard that. And... Right, 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 that man of chat. And I yeah. love both of those cuts i mean <laughs> yeah that's right that's right <laughs> I, I gave your album five stars man it's a it's a great wow. album um uh, you know yeah, you, you're talking about things that really define space mm -hmm. and, and capture it a moment in time like those are really big things that happen there like that tubular bells yeah huge i mean it, it just really captured something and so things that really give us a picture or a closing image you know of a particular vision right or perspective you know like a photo photograph can catch like an expression on a face yep you can go back and relate to that and say wow that's really something you know, mm -hmm. that's, or that's really you know, expressing something, you know, you know, you know, with another sense, you know, and I mean, to be able to tap in to that dimension is really, really very special, you know, and I think that that's, it just reminds us with all the conflict that we have, like there are in, within all this chaos and conflict that we have, man, like there are really uh very special people you know who occupy our beloved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know they're people who are really out there working to express what otherwise would not be expressed yeah and so so we have so we have a responsibility that comes with, with sure that, you know it really is, you know. How how do you how do you see that? How do you see that responsibility coming in? Because I, I know you you know you're an author and, and you know you you you're really speaking on a tradition, you know of you know celebrating those yeah. who have been able to encounter you know uh, that other space. You know what I mean? And and say something definitive that that really has meaning beyond the person whoever you know came up with. <clears throat> I think we were put on this planet, like you said, we all have a responsibility to fill out our destiny, you know, and to make make a difference in whatever way we can. I mean, even if it's just helping our neighbors out. That's that's it. That's it. That's right. That's all it would, you know. Really if somebody's right. hurting, you can go over there and and yeah. ease their pain. That that's a responsibility. You know? Or, or, it doesn't have to be gigantic. It could be small things. Absolutely, yeah, that's right. It doesn't have to be grandiose. Yeah, that's right. You know, or just or just walking down the street in opposite sure. someone else and and just give them a give them a smile. That's it. You know, just some acknowledgement. Yeah, exactly right. Because right. I think we, you know, because because we, we don't live in a faceless reality. No, you know, and it's just so something like right now everything is so uh subjective because um everything has been over politicized you know and, politics and the news media that's what's <laughs> depressing <laughs> if you get rid of those two we're in good shape <laughs> I mean, 
what do we do? We lose this sense of how do we how do we get to a place or approach a place that is culturally neutral? You know, I just remember in the '60s, the news guys yeah, like yeah, Walter Cronkite. That's right, you know. And I had a and I had a you know with, uh, great uh, cellist Yo Yo Ma. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. So when he just talk, he was talking about how do we approach that space with our art and the music that is culturally neutral. Yes. You know? So we let go of all that other right. Stuff and get to that and, and another thing is like just for me and as we approach that I think it's about just for me it's been like having a curiosity and an openness to experience other people mm -hmm. and to see how they view the world and you know and how they go about creating uh, reality and uh, that's <clears throat> just, been, uh, just a, really a wonderful part of my experience in the in music and the arts is having strangers you know group after group strangers inviting me mm -hmm. to create co-create and collaborate mm -hmm. with, you know and we bring something together you know that has this this meaning and that and so that's a been a, just a very very enriching part of uh, well you've been lucky because you got to witness other cultures around the world and touring and things like that. So yeah, you have that experience. Um, yeah, and I and yeah. I like it. And then I've been, you know, also very interested in, you know, the the language, the verbiage. You know, how do sure. we express? How do we express this? You mm -hmm. know, and and what that actually means, and just the, yeah, you know. So I I, I see the. Uh, I, you know, I believe in human, you know, I believe in our human potential, man. Oh, yeah. It's there. It's yeah, there. It's, you know, we, we can do whatever we set, you know, our sights on. And so I think that's what we have to do. Yep. Our part. I, you know, keep, yeah. My my wife and I saw that movie about, you remember the soccer team in Thailand that mm. gets stuck in the cave? Mm. It was, I think it's called the 13 or something like that. We saw the movie yesterday. Oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's brilliant. I didn't I mean, see the movie, but I remember that was ongoing. And how it's, there's a, a movie on net on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. About it. The 13, I think it's called. Yeah. Cause I have Amazon. Yeah. It's incredible. I mean, over 5,000 people came to the rescue That's and awesome. the, the guys that actually figured it all out was two. I think they were from England, either England or Australia, two divers. But just the compassion to help save these boys. Right. And how people all came together was. What is the title of the film? Just, I, I'm, I'm interested. The 13, maybe, because yeah, it was 13 players. Yeah, with the subtext. yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. And the soccer team, the Thailand. Um, yeah. Right. And it was definitely on Amazon. Just like an outing, right? And then, yeah. yeah, that well, one of the guys. It was her birthday, so they always hang out at this cave. But they went, they went too deep in this cave, yeah, yeah. and then it rained, and they had a monsoon, and they got stuck. Yeah. yeah. And and to get them out, they had they had to uh, knock them out. You know, with you, you know, like when you're being put to sleep. And oh tie them up so they can get through these really tight spots. Because if they were awake, they'd freak out, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. You know, I'll watch it and we can discuss it. Yeah, know? definitely. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Yeah, and so definitely, like man. those type of things that reach across. Yeah, all over the world helped out. Boundaries, man, and I mean that's that's really what we, you know. It, it, it's so important. I think uh, and, uh, sports shows us that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this, the the sports world is doing a lot of problems. Well, work. Well, one of the album covers that um, you played on could also yeah. unite the world, and that was Automatic Man <laughs> with the <Yeah>. alien. <laughs> oh. Let me tell you, man. 
even if you knew nothing about the group or its music, you were totally intrigued and had to buy that album cover. <laughs> it was yeah. one of the best album covers of that time, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, that was a really big, um, big moment for me and the band, mm -hmm. because that was, again, that was um, a statement about uh, futurism also. And it, and it moved, uh, and, and so it's actually, you know, a, a thread of connection between that automatic man and uh, from the vault notes for the future. Right. With automatic man, the uh, the theme was moving from the storytelling was moving from the antediluvian world, which is the world before the flood, and into this and projection of the future, of which automatic man. Uh, uh, space automatic man occupied as the hero of the psychic future mm -hmm. I mean, of our thinking of right our, our processing you know of what we ideate and that and uh, so that was a very very important uh, period for me um the automatic man it, it, uh, you had a great voice man you, you, your voice is awesome and you wrote oh, all the music. <laughs> yeah, and I and I love it. And that was a big. It was a transformative um, moment um, for me because the music uh, really expressed things that I felt about the world. Right. And I had moved from like my earlier albums and the albums that I wrote for these uh, jazz masters mm -hmm. uh, was really so important for me and the experience I had from that just absolutely invaluable with automatic man I had transitioned from being a composer into a songwriter right which are two different things and uh so I was very passionate about that my uh and then the voice to deliver that because I've always because I've always sung and, yeah, good voice, uh, really good voice. Yeah, that's something that I think about. Uh, I think about that a lot. Yeah. And with, uh, and with notes um, for the future, uh, it's like moving from a. Uh, it's it's back to a compositional mindset as opposed to right. Song. But that sensibility is there in terms of you know having a a, a theme that works as an as a narration. And then the sounds, uh, because I've, I've been very interested in uh, electronic music. Right. Since very early on, which uh, came from um, a wonderful uh, experience that I had with a longtime friend and early mentor uh, with Herbie Hancock. Mm -hmm. We went, he had set up this because we, you know, we, we played together and actually the first film that I uh that I worked on was a film I did with with Herbie Hancock this film called The Spook Who Sat, Sat Behind the Door which is um which is gone it's it's actually it's a historical piece now it represents a you know slice of the American experience you know within the the Library of Congress and that but but he was very very forward thinking uh because Herbie's uh Degree is in um, it, it, uh, in elect it's electricity electronics engineering engineering yeah there. right yeah yeah he didn't have a music degree it's just right. like uh, you know that you know he always did music yeah and um, yeah I have a side story with hmm. that also it's my um, my um, cousin um who's much older than i am uh she they they went to school together in chicago so all my family are chicagoans on my mother's side but back to this part of the story uh uh herbie had arranged for us to go to stanford university spend an afternoon there and they had to sign the papers and the whole thing and, and uh xerox had a lab there on the campus and what i saw there that day was 
I saw the mouse for the first time. I saw a keyboard controlling the different pitches, you know, uh, which would control the, the, the pitching of the electronically created sound. And so that's a big deal, seeing the mouse, the screen, and that I was, you know, that was it. Open, completely opened my head because I'd been playing uh, electric piano and clavinet. And, um, but that I saw, I just kind of had a peek into the future. And then right. in school, I had met uh, Subotnik, mm -hmm. you know, who worked with uh, Bukla synthesizers. And so that, and then there was uh, Patrick Gleason, who's uh, just a you know phenomenal uh, world-class synthesis who played with Herbie. Mm -hmm. And he had a uh, studio in San Francisco called Different Fur. Mm -hmm. He was a uh, a dealer of uh, a range of electronic instruments. So I bought my first instruments from from Pat, hmm. and so Herbie Hancock is right there in the center of that, and it just opened up a whole other world uh, huh. for me, which is really well <clears throat> you know in you know the music of Automatic Man. Is is it true that? You couldn't duplicate the sound of Automatic Man live, and you didn't get as many gigs as you wanted to, and that kind of led to the downfall of the band and splitting up. Um, I, I think that we, the, the live performance, I think is for as with all groups, was like a work in progress. Right. And so we were, we were working on it. I think maybe, uh, I guess you know, we, there's always hindsight. Because we were so genuinely invested in what the music became. Sure, the live performance, because there were so many textures that occurred because, you know, we did, we were able to achieve so many things like in the studio. And mm -hmm. Wonderful engineer and everything was inspirational and the words, the lyric and the sound that just continued to expand. And so my, my hope is that, uh, very soon the album will be uh, re-released, remastered. That'd be and, great. And, and different, and yeah, with a full, with this full sonic representation of yeah. that music. And so, of course, there, there's disappointment that we were not able to see that band and the, the great potential mm -hmm. it tapped on to, uh, to its fullest point. But it was an experience, I think, that pushed us all into the natural trajectory of our, you know, musical careers. And it's something that I reference all of the time. It, and, and it really means a lot uh, to me that this music has, you know, connected with so many people and that it still does resonate. It still does. <clears throat> and then you came out with Visitors, uh, the second album. Were you trying to appease the commercial realm with that album because it it changed it was kind of some of the tracks kind of sounded a little disco and of course it was the era of disco as well yes well i think what what was when the when the core of the band um changed mm -hmm. uh, michael shreve left and then um and bassist donnie harvey right uh, the record company just said, well, they wanted, you know, they just stepped in. So they wanted, you know, I figured uh, that their investment. Yeah. And I have to tell you, it was like a thing where I, uh, something I've always paid attention to because it was so deep for me. Um, I pretty much lost control. Mm -hmm. that was it. Record company took over. I, basically I, I lost control. Yeah. The people who I worked with and say, so you're going to do this, this, <clears> this, this producer who really was not really keyed in to the aesthetic of Automatic Man at all. Right. That was something that, we, that was very, very personal and that we as, as a unit had developed over a good amount of time. And so we didn't have that line of communication there. And I certainly was not at a place in my own journey, maturity wise, to articulate that and stand up for that and insist sure. that <clears throat> we do whatever that next step is without, without those boundaries mm -hmm. or 
or without, you know, uh, conforming to these strictures, you know, because it probably would have been best to like just disband and right do something else because it really really changed it and uh but but you know what what we but we are always in a state of learning sure i think that's what it is so it's all about growth and um what i will say is though um when the band did break up i felt like i was um i was exiled from what was really central right well, because I, I was just completely committed to what that band was and what the music was. I I will say, though, Todd, you were very good at the R&B side of it, mm -hmm. live wire, so you want to be. I mean, if you kept on, maybe well, as a solo artist, you probably could have done very well with that R&B side of you. Yeah, I you love know that. You know, I, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? Look, I, I've always been in this thing where I wanted it was very important for me to play these different genres of music authentically. Yeah. And so in that sense, um how I see myself as a musician at a at a really at the root of it, I'm a uh I'm a blues man. Mm -hmm. You see, so that's the it's if that's what it is right so it's the blues it's the rhythm it's the melody it's the spirit of that you know it's the you know uh it's the mojo you know it's it's the bottle tree it's the you know upper delta mm -hmm. you know it's the appellation <clears throat> you know uh professor long hair yeah uh, yeah i mean as well as the spiritual part of it, the and 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 that which is at the root of jazz expression, and that yep. is you know transformed into the roots of you know what we have you know as American popular music, man. So that is absolutely there, and all of those are really really important areas to you know to find yourself in. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I, I can tell you for a fact, though, I was a top 40 DJ back in the late 70s. Oh, you were? Okay, talk to me about that. I wasn't aware of that. Well, Coast, right? you would have made millions <laughs> if you okay. went that route. <laughs> you yeah. were right in the hub. I mean, I played Donna Summer, and, you know, sure. I, it was a great eclectic mixture for top 40 back in the late 70s. Yeah. You know, you, you had the the cars and you had you know the knack and i i just had um um paul roberts from uh sniffing the tears on this morning remember sniffing the tears with uh driver's seat that was another song you know back then and yes i mean wow. the knack but you know donna summer was huge at that time you know yeah, well, and I, I knew I, I knew uh bruce gary right mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew Bruce. Yeah. Yep. And that, but uh, no, I I know what you're saying, and and um, you had it. I mean, yeah. your voice is incredible. Oh, thank you. And the music but, was changing. It was changing the planet. Yes. It was. And so you know, just fast forward. You know, I'm thinking about <laughs> some, um, you know, um, sort of a you know vocalization. To what, what, was it not in you to go that route? Maybe. Basically, what what I did was like I went from one project to the other. Right. And after that, it was this really wonderful um, Peter Gabriel called me and mm -hmm. I became, you know, I I joined his band. I toured with Peter and I recorded with him the the album that uh, Robert Fripp um, produced. And yeah. Actually, yeah, I'm involved in uh, a, a book that's uh, been written by. Uh, Italian author uh, Luca Parasai is his name. Mm -hmm. he wrote um, his most recently uh, published book was called the The Meaning of Music um, about Paul McCartney. Oh, huh. and uh, which is really good. I mean, it's just an incredible book. I don't have it here in my office. I'm up here. In my, right. This is my office. You see, I've got books. This wall right oh, here. Oh yeah. <laughs> in, and I and I've got the the listening system. And uh, 
of course. Remote volunteer. This is like, uh, as my you know, my wife and son know that this is daddy's room, <laughs> sanctuary. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not invited. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have to put a do not enter sign. They know better. <laughs> That's, That's funny. We all, we all have to have it. It's just like, I of have, course, I have, I have, uh, an actor, right? And he has a, a room that kind of opens up. He's got a walk in closet and he goes like through there. And on the other side, that's where he memorizes, you know, his script and parts. Yeah. Like, you don't go back there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm kind of in the, uh, I, I'm in the do not enter chamber right now. <laughs> yeah, my sanctuary is talking to music legends like you. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I missed you. I, I, I said my sanctuary is talking to music legends like you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really like, ex you know, excited because like I have a, um, some things like the, the De La Soul uh, uh, catalog has been re-released. Mm -hmm. Re-released. And I have a record that they sampled uh, on the, uh, on uh, Stakes Are High. It's called uh, Sunshine and uh, uh, Jay-Z has sampled. Um, in my earlier works in uh uh which is really great with mm. uh, art work with um uh, called uh jazz M uh, mullenstein i believe it's his name a very interesting artist and also uh kendrick lamar has sampled a couple of my favorite. oh great wonderful so I, so I feel i'm i'm relevant within the the conversation ray right so what i'm doing right now this is not coming back or, you know, golden oldies. This is just part of a sure. the musical evolution. You see what exactly. I'm yeah. I'm not that at all because I work every day, man. I, you know, I practice every day. I, I write every day. Mm -hmm. I can focus and I'm there and uh I, you know, I just see the the art musical art world like opening up in a very very beautiful way you know, sure technology their tools to use and yes man i can have deep arguments on both sides of the conversation right that's true uh, we have to position ourselves in the reality of the world that we're in because this world is in a continuous state of change mm -hmm. and we go with that and if we and, and if we are not malleable and we don't go with it we cease to exist you know and uh once we let go of that thing that core of, of you know the reason why we're here you know you know you know where we go right from there man we go to, we go to god's waiting room that's right that's right that's it you know so i, I would have loved to heard your station in uh <laughs> you know you make me think about <laughs> What was that? What was that series? And it was only one season long, man. I really loved it, man. Was was uh, Studio Fifty Four? Mm -hmm. Remember that? And and it was on there. And I know because it was a, a series. I know that uh, Mick Jagger was one of the producers. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They you know did. I, mean? I thought it was great. I yeah, loved that. yeah. But I saw some of those it, episodes. You the name of it too, right? Yeah, I saw some of those episodes. <clears throat> that was great, wasn't it? Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, and, and, and it and it hewed pretty close uh, to the truth, man. Mm -hmm. You know, I, so I wanted I, to mention I had on uh, not long ago Charles Wright. He did this song "Express Yourself." Remember that? Sure, yeah. Express yourself, you know. Oh, yeah, no, I know that record. Yeah, he he will not do anything electronic. Yeah, yeah. he's a firm believer of real musical instruments, so anything you know like um that alters your voice or um electronic drums which wow. he had a conversation with stevie wonders because wow. stevie said hey man this is the way of the world now electronic drums is where it's at and he said no 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 that's not real music but i have one question uh-huh 
you're gonna turn in your uh you know your Tesla dual motor man for a horse. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm an Amish guy, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, well, that's a whole other conversation, right there. <laughs> and, you know, and and then then we could sit around and and complain about the you know the price, the cost of hay, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, like you said, it could go both ways, you know, to the purest. You know, I, you know, I live in a, this area. It's called, it's. Uh, Reseda Reseda Ranch, and so mm -hmm. there are people here. I you know, I see people, uh, you know, riding the horses every day. Yeah, you know, in this in it in it's urban, but it's like it's you know, it's cock a doodle doo and. You know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if I didn't like electronics, I wouldn't be on Zoom. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is. Uh, Okay, that's an example of uh, protestation. Mm -hmm. But how can you? I, I don't understand the the meaning and the purpose of protesting that, which is a part of our natural evolution. Yeah, that's true. I don't, I, I don't think that you need to. I think you keep the uh, uh, you keep the sensibility. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, for instance, like that, you know, people who use, uh, okay, yourself, you're a writer, okay? So there are those, uh, what you got? Um, I'm not going to use an old typewriter. Uh, Joyce, Joyce, Joyce <laughs> Oak, right? Yeah. She, she, writes, she writes everything out by hand, still like on a legal plan. Right. Uh, Toni Morrison wrote everything out like on a, on a, on a That's legal right. plan, you know? And then you have the people who are just like um, typewriter people. You know, and they're not going to deal with, you know, Macintosh or Hewlett Packard. You know, I mean, so look, You're you, right. know, you know what things you can do with sure. it. You, you, you know, to just to do the research on you guys, I would have to, have to go into the library yeah. and sit there for hours, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, I just go on my computer and boom, 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 you know. I find things so easy, you know. So, no, I'm with you on that. So, so I just okay. think like um, as a commentarian mm -hmm. of, of our world, which is, is that like, a word, commentarian? Absolutely, yeah. We, <laughs> we have things, you okay. Know, and, we have, well, and and that's a and that's a higher level than a talking head. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what you have to do, you, you know, you hold up the card, man, you know, where it's properly spelled and right. I can, so they get the, you know, the phonetic <laughs> breakdown, you know. Right, right. You right. know, I'm a, you know, but no, but what I'm just saying, like, you know, we can take the position and own the position that we know that like human dealings and actions and you know, of every kind, man, are out there for the artistic season. That's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. you know? We're supposed to put light on it. We're supposed right. to show it from different angles and that sort of thing. So I think there are certainly like people who want to get off of the train, you know. Or uh, that's another thing, you know. Do you want to take the train from, um, you know, Manhattan to uh, Chicago, or do you want to ride a horse? Mm -hmm. You know, true. I would love to have an excuse, man, to fly to uh, you know New York and for us to hang. You know, if you <laughs> have something to you know to eat, and you know, I love a good cup of coffee. You know, but just think of that, like. Just the 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 economy of time that we're dealing with well, yeah. see, has been accelerated <clears throat> by these tools. Now, that yeah. does not make us soulless. Right. Just, we should be aware of it because there are things in there. Because as we know, like, see, we when when I came up again, like as a as a reader, a lot of things that. Um, what attracted me was 
where the future, the, the writing of the future is, you know, so who the big one, what, you know, like, I know you're aware of too, Alvin Toffler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, future shot. Mm -hmm. And, and that sort of thing. So that's a great way of, you know, and so they had these projections and this is what we're going to do now. Like these, these, the tech people now, they're like dealing with, uh, who do they work with? Yes. So we've got this chip that will can do this many actions in, in this amount of the percentage of a nanosecond. You know, we have this capability. So what does that enable us to do? So they're not dealing with the future is because we're in the future. Right. Well, just like the whole thing, people are reacting to the change, you know, and worried about the change. Man, the change has already occurred. Yeah. We're doing just like the, you know, the hooping and the hollering. Yeah. You know? It's already happened. Yeah. You know, we're in it. You know, and so think about so like the tech companies, like who they're what and these designers they say, okay, we have this capability, we can do all these actions in this split amount of time. They're dealing with the cultural historians and the anthropologists. Mm -hmm. Where is human development going, you know, as we understand it from you know the disciplines of these this science you know so the things that are being quote unquote dropped on us right they know you know what they, they know of course not, they know they're not raymond they're not guessing <laughs> What, just like artificial intelligence, they already know it's already happening. <laughs> it's happening. Yeah, it's going to get yeah. worse. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing at this point. We got to wait and see, I guess. Without, without uh, spell check and, you know, grammar yeah. check. Yeah. You know, I love those things. Well, that's how I, I wrote my book. It's a part of it. You know, something, you know, yeah. I mean, it's just part of our yeah. reality, you know. And so, sure. again, I, you know, certainly I I understand the purist. And there right. always will be those who are going to set outside of that of that curve, you know, of, of, of development. And that's all right, you know. Yeah, um, they're old school. They're, they're, yeah, you know? they're, and, they're, and they're cherished people. Right. Man, express yourself. You know, I got. You know, I'm. I'm with that. Yeah. Huh? yeah he's a cool guy. He looks good too. He looks really good. Yeah, he's in good shape. He's yeah. in good shape. Yeah. Is he outperforming? Is he? Is he maintaining? Yeah, that? he still does things. He's got uh, a new album coming out. Brand new album. We were. I was promoting his new album. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, well, he's, he's he's his voice is he hasn't changed. Right. That's really wonderful. Yeah. yeah really really great well this that's one of the that, that's what i'm really looking forward to is mm -hmm. uh, is performing bringing the music for the okay next. what is that going to happen well we'll see the uh the the album is now on the it's it's on the major platforms i'm doing a, a good amount of press okay i'm going to be doing um some videos as well some short films you know, and talking about it, expanding the concept, and as you know, like the the circle isn't complete until people are in the music. Right. That's when it comes together. Yep. Know? And I'm looking very. I'm really looking forward to that, to performing and taking this this out there. That's what that's what Good. I love to do, and it will be a combination of the acoustic. Yep. And the electronic. Okay, that'll be great. So, Yes, and so uh, it's looking forward to that, man. I think it's a it's a very very uh, uh, it's an important time for me, but we have to look at it as it's not the important time because I think that um, at any place that we may be um, is the perfect time mm -hmm. to take art to the next level. Yeah, and, and I and I'm really really committed to that thin edge in the fringe and that <clears throat> experimentation and that, um, you know, uh, the unknown of being just, you know, really, really stretched. Yeah. That's really what it is. And so I'm, you know, I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm looking to, you know, to collaborate with others. I was just going to say that, that you read my mind. 
Yeah. Very yeah. much so. You know, I think uh, I believe you know music is a collaborative art. Sure. You know, I would love to see another album like what you guys did with Fuse One. I mean, that that was incredible. Jeez. Yeah. Okay. Another right. collaboration would be neat. Uh -huh. Sure. Even Absolutely. even a a concert, you know, of all right. those guys. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that must have been really great, huh? And being involved in yeah, that. We have a Creed Taylor man. He was really quite a quite a visionary. Yeah. He was, he was special, powerful advocate for the music. As 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 you are too, man. This has uh, really been a pleasure to talk to you. Me too, man. That's. Uh, I, I appreciate your. You're incredible. And I, and I know, you know that. You know, you're in the now. Sure. You know, when Automatic Man, when that album came out, I bought it. Okay. Right, right away. Okay. So, you know, I kind of knew your mm. the background. Because mm. it was part of my my time, you know, buying yeah. both of those albums. Uh -huh. You know, I also Journey, uh, I think it was Looking to the Future. When that first came out, that was another um, mm. with Greg Raleigh. And it was before... Before they got commercial, they were kind of spacey yeah, yeah, as well. Before, uh, uh, yeah, right. They were kind of spacey as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that was right. probably about the same time, I think. And, and so so what I think of is just like that whole experiential thing that I'm so fortunate to have grown up in. And I, you know, I'm a product mm -hmm. of that environment. Yes. Yeah. I am that everything that you associate with san francisco i am that including you know i'm a uh, i'm an accidental activist because mm -hmm. you know, i'm always right this is i you know i said earlier man like you know you see it you speak on it you reflect it. it of course yeah yeah and and, and let's propose you know a positive solution like right? you know i don't believe in just <clears> the, <throat> the, the limit approach making a lot of noise you know Let's put it out there and let's propose a, a propose a solution. That's right, but just and, to put and, it out there and, and think positive. You know, right, make noise. I'm not of that. So that's good. That's I'm seeing idea. a lot more of that. I'm seeing yeah, a lot more of that. That I'm a part of. Yeah, part of, and that's definitely at the core of the subjects that I'm, you know, looking at with uh, from the vault notes in the future. Right. And and man, I just look forward, you know, to uh, you know continuing this exchange mm -hmm. and you know expanding the relatability of you know um, this um, developing concept of, of music. You know, I'm I'm already thinking forward in terms of okay, mm -hmm. the next in a certain way, I'm going to develop this because I absolutely love the electronics. It's it's. it's <clears throat> been at the core of my musical um yeah development along with the acoustic you know the improvisation the uh you know the dialects of jazz and that but then this whole other thing which is the spatial aspect of music when those elements come together that's really what i'm committed uh to is really to mm -hmm. Go to that fringe and let's speak about it and talk about it and have a conversation and mm -hmm. invite people into it because the people who will come into this and support it, they will, they will increase the music. Yeah, exactly. I'll understand it better. You know, me talking to you, I understand the music better. Mm -hmm. You see, so I appreciate that. But yeah, 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 I appreciate you. You're a lot like, um, I mean, the guys that would fit in your realm if you collaborated with them, John McLaughlin, he, you know, he's like you, you know, he, he tries the different things yeah. here and there. And also, um, you know, of course, Billy Cobham, he sure. could play on any of your albums, right. sure. you know? Yeah. Right. And I so, could see you guys together. Sure. Yeah, you know, and uh, yeah, I know he's, uh, yeah, he's a special musician. And, and he's he lives in Europe, right? That's what I heard. Well, no, he moved he moved back to Panama. Oh, he did. Yeah, he was in Switzerland for a while, and then he moved back to Panama. Yeah, okay. Yeah, wow. he's a good guy. Anytime I want to do a chat, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> That's wonderful. He's a really well, nice man, guy. Uh, uh, wonderful exchange. Uh, the the album is a, 
it's uh, available on all the major um, platforms. And uh, yeah. I was going to send you something. Remind me what I was going <clears> to <throat> send you. Do you want me to send, um, have Billy send my email to you? Yes. Okay, I'll do that. He'll send it to you. I know I said I was going to send something. And I want to send my, I'm going to send a link, uh, ebooks from both of my books so you can open okay, it up and, cool. and start reading. Okay. I think you'll like it. Oh, I'm sure I will. Yeah. Because you know, I, I know I had, had said I was going to send you something and I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll okay. It sounds good. Yeah, you know, and so I, I got I, one last question for you. Oh, sure. I ask everybody this question. I get some interesting answers. If you had a Field of Dreams wish, like the movie, to perform yeah. with, collaborate with anyone from the past or present, who would that be? It is. <laughs> I mean, if you want to put a whole band together, that's cool. <laughs> okay. I, I tell you who, who I, I know I would really love to collaborate with. Um, and I'll go from like the past. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to collaborate with Wayne Shorter. Okay, yeah, good answer. Mm -hmm. From the past, mm -hmm. and in I think in in the present, and then I'm just thinking, of course, like you know, this is like in you know the jazz, right, um, right. I think uh, Brantford Marcellus. Marcellus, yeah. In the in the area of contemporary classical. Mm -hmm. Um, because I like, you know, I really love what uh, what he brings uh, to the music. He's a, you know, he's a very serious artist. Yeah, and um, that I love. Uh, I've always uh, really, really admired. Um, I know this is not one, is it? It's three. <laughs> you can, you can uh, pick David, a whole band. Uh, David Byrne. Yep. Yeah, he's a thinker. Mm -hmm. and yeah it, it's very very wide very very wide uh one of one of the you know artists i know i would have um loved to have worked with and i certainly have you know associates around you know who've been you know with him before he passed away i, I would have loved to um collaborate with david boyd yeah And there was a definitely a good period where that would have that was right where I was. <clears throat> You're associated with so many genres that you can work with anybody. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and I love it, and I go to all of it. You know, uh, like uh, authentically. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. He's really, really, uh, and he's an ideologue. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, you know, there's definitely dimensions that drove not just the persona but what he actually put out out there yeah and, and then i'm you know and, and then i'm very interested in collaborative spaces as, as as well i'm interested in certainly uh there's some directors that i would love to collaborate with in art films right telling you're, you're big on the film side too that's right yeah i i love that because <clears throat> um mm -hmm. There's a lot. There's a lot of legacy uh, built into into mm -hmm. film and that type of uh, storytelling. And yep. I think the whole uh, sequential aspect um, that occurs with that, and which is something a little bit different than the uh, liter literary. And so, who is that? Uh, um, it's a director I'd love to work with too. Uh, 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 Walter Herzog. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with? Mm -hmm. with um, yeah, he's a deep consult, uh, you know, conceptual guy. I've worked with uh, I've worked with Norman Jewison. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, on the uh, on the score of the hurricane, and he's a very deep uh, music man. Mm -hmm. And so you know, we've got all these things, and then I love what's happening, man. The potential of you know uh, just contemporary music right now. I think people are really positioned to experience a different frequency of music and so mm -hmm. I just want to remain open sure see if, I can, if i can receive you know some of that energy that's out there and that what do we you know call the the, the collective 
consciousness, you know, and so we, we just have to continue to reach for it. Ty, there's a lot of great music out there. And what I'm noticing, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of new um, progressive rock coming out now. Pro, prog Absolutely. rock is getting stronger. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of new albums out there, a lot of great musicians. Um, there's, if you go on YouTube, you'll see a lot of great musicians. Yeah, you know? and, and, and you know what it is, uh, Ray, man, like, there's some stories that need to be told. Right. And I try to do that on my show. I, I bring a lot of artists from all over the world, and That's I expose right, them here in America from right. all we're, over. We're be, yeah. Let's don't be safe, man. Like, let's get, let's get to it. I try to help out as much as I can. Yep. That's right. That's, yeah. that, that's my purpose. <laughs> I help musicians. <laughs> yeah, you know what? There's, there's, there's joy in that, man. There is a big joy in that. And there's life in it, too. Because music has given me so much and got me through so many things in life. And Absolutely. I guess that's I'm giving something. back. Maybe I'm right. giving back. That's right. Well, yeah. That's, that, that's beautiful. You know. Yeah, man. Todd, thank you, man, for being on the show today. It's been a real pleasure. I could talk to you all day. You know that. Yeah, well, we, you know, we can talk again. <laughs> okay. Definitely. Right. Yeah, well, right. keep me updated about yeah, I will. And I know live I shows. I'll figure out. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and, and other things of note, you know, I'll, I'll send you some things, you know. Okay. You know, we'll just keep you in the loop, you know. And I appreciate that. We'll, we'll connect it now, Ray. Thank okay, you. cool. I, I want to say special thanks to Billy, of course, Billy James of Glass Onion. I've known Billy now for years. Yeah. Uh, he arranged this interview today, and um, Todd can be found. Let's see, is the album the release date June twenty third? Though, yes, is that official? But, okay, that's the, the official. Yes, from the vault. Yes, and you can pre order it um, at Bandcamp uh, or Blue Buddha dot bandcap dot com. I think. And it's and it's up on you know uh, Spotify and okay. Apple, all of the yes, and you can go to uh, www.toddcochran.com official website. You're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and also YouTube. Yes, thank Todd, you. thank you, man. Appreciate it. It's been wonderful talking to you. <laughs> all right, man. All right, all right, man. Take care. My best to you and the family. <laughs> and, and, and yours as well. Thank you. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye now. Bye -bye.